Pilgrim at Tinker Creek, Chapter 5, Untying the Knot. In this very short chapter, Dillard latches on to a key idea and continues with the seasonal exploration of the book. She opens the chapter saying, Yesterday I set out to catch the new season, and instead I found an old snakeskin. Although those two things don't seem to have a whole lot in common, Dillard draws a link between the two. She picks it up as another wonder of nature and begins carrying it along casually home. But as she's walking along, she finds something strange about it. It appears to have a knot in it. Dillard couldn't imagine how a knot came to be in a snakeskin. Surely the snake itself didn't tie it. But the closer she examines it, the more confused she becomes. She says, the knot had no beginning. Idly I turned it around in my hand, searching for a place to untie. I came to with a start, when I realized I must have turned the thing around fully ten times. Intently, then, I traced the knot's lump around with a finger. It was continuous. I couldn't untie it any more than I could untie a doughnut. It was a loop without beginning or end. These snakes are magic, I thought for a second. And then, of course, I reasoned what must have happened. The skin had been pulled inside out like a peeled sock for several inches. Then an inch or so of the inside out part, a piece whose length was coincidentally equal to the diameter of the skin, had somehow been turned right side out again making a thick lump whose edges were lost in a wrinkles, looking exactly like a knot. She then takes this image and connects it to the change of the seasons. She says, So, I have been thinking about the change of seasons. I don't want to miss spring this year. I want to distinguish the last winter frost from the out-of-season one, the frost of spring. I want to be there on the spot the moment the grass turns green. I want to miss this radical revolution. I always miss this radical revolution. I see it the next day from the window, the yard so suddenly green and lush I could envy Nebuchadnezzar down on all fours eating grass. This year I want to stick a net into time and say, now, as men plant flags on ice and snow and say, here. But it occurred to me that I could no more catch spring by the tip of the tail than I could untie the apparent knot in the snakeskin. There are no edges to grasp. Both are continuous loops. She elaborates on this idea by talking about how early people must have been surprised by the changing seasons and establishing the fact that the seasons do change and that there will come another spring, another winter, another fall was extremely important. And yet, in spite of this continuous cycle of weather, it's impossible to grasp the edge of it. There's always out-of-season weather. In one of my absolute favorite sentences, she says, The temperature, of course, lags far behind the calendar seasons, since the earth absorbs and releases heat slowly, like a leviathan breathing. I love that image of the earth as a leviathan breathing. But she concludes this image of time as a continuous loop with no edges to unravel and untie by connecting the same image again to our search for meaning behind it all. She says on page 77, the power we seek, too, seems to be a continuous loop. I have always been sympathetic with the early notion of, of a divine power that exists in a particular place or that travels about over the face of the earth as man might wonder. And when he is there, he is surely not here. You can shake the hand of a man you meet in the woods, but the spirit seems to roll along like the mythical hoop snake with its tail in its mouth. There are no hands to shake or edges to untie. It rolls along the mountain ridges like a fireball, shooting off a spray of sparks at random, and will not be trapped, slowed, grasped, fetched, peeled, or aimed. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel! This is the hoop of flame that shoots the rapids in the creek or spins across the dizzy meadows. This is the arsonist of the sunny woods. Catch it if you can. The snake with its tail in its mouth that she's referring to here is the famous Ouroboros, which represents wholeness or infinity, an idea that's also clearly reflected in the knot in the snakeskin. Much like the tree with the lights in it in chapter 2, this spiritual experience has no edge. There's no way to find it and unravel it. You have to simply let it roll over you. And her last statement, catch it if you can, leads her in to her next observation, 
in chapter 6. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.